this could, it could all go horribly wrong at any minute. And the rubber chicken says, I guess the Supreme Court wiped its ass with the Constitution this week because they ran out of toilet paper. But what would I know? I'm just a rubber chicken. Well, you have gone way too far, okay? Yes, you have. They, we are going to get a blowback, and we will be thrown out of this business. You do not understand anything, do you? you it sucked this cockscock. What is the matter? Stop it already, okay? We have got to get on with things. We have got to get on with Lewis Black's Rantcast. 87, you sick chicken. Lewis Black's Rantcast 87, entitled And, And, And. I entitled it And, And, And because uh, we had a big week of ands. We had the two. We had the, uh, the, the, the January 6th committee hearing, and we had another January 6th committee hearing, and we had a Supreme Court decision about concealed carry in New York City, and we had uh, 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 the reversal of the Roe versus Wade, so that that's out of the book, okay, no more of that, and uh, we had the Congress passing uh, the new the new gun law, yes, sir, Bob, the new gun safety law entitled whatever the fuck they want to entitle it, and what a cute name it probably is, because I've forgotten it already, because this week there's been so much jammed down Uh, our throats this week that it just defies description for some people it's uh, the happiest time that's ever happened for me i am i'm i I don't know what to do i i I, I don't even know where to start hence the and 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 also it's because uh, of all the adjectives and all of the nouns and all the verbs and all the things that i could there's this there's this there's this that describes all of the madness that went across the boards this week you know god in heaven I was, I was doing it. I can't even get back to what I was doing yesterday. I was wandering around the apartment in my response to the, in, the, uh, the Roe versus Wade decision and just going, and I was talking to people, I go, it's this, it's disgusting, and it's, I think, reprehensible, and it's, and I went on and on and on. Hence, and, and, and. That's the reason for that title, okay? I was going to call it Opposites Implode. That's the other one, because that's what's really happening, Okay. It's just kind of coming together, left and right, boom, and here we go. There's an explosion, and uh, the uh, the the and there's there's no majority rule, okay? It's whatever it is. Uh, if you're in the majority, forget it, and uh, that's the way it's going to be. And this is what we have decided to live with. And it is beyond belief. And I think what it means is that there will be a left wing demagogue coming down the road to follow the. The, the right winger uh, who, uh, you know, just uh, is under uh, scrutiny by the um, by the uh, House committee, by the uh, January 6th committee. And that those folks who were uh, under attack because of working poll workers and, and election were and folks who were working in the Georgia election and the, the abuse and the, and the threats. And the, the the overturning of their lives and I, it's, it, it's unbelievable, and the, and the, and the, and the Republicans act as if nothing has happened. Stop it! You got people. What do you think is going on there? What do you think these people are making shit up? All right. No, you're the ones who elected a guy who made shit up. Okay. And and you've done everything you can, and by protecting him. You, you've got people telling you what the hell it means to their lives, and you will not do, lift a fucking finger. You know, it, 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 it just it defies description. It, it's a level. It's it, madness is what it is. And, and, then, and then we follow it with the, 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 the Department of Justice stuff, where it, it turns out they're trying to install this uh, attorney. Well, we weren't really trying to do anything there. Yes, you were. Yes, shit was occurring there, okay? They're stacking up these things like dominoes, and they're flicking it, and then bam, 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 and now they've got more information. Well, we really don't know. Yes, they do, all right? They said that this, I'm stunned at the shit that's coming out. I mean, I did not think that they could put together this kind of a case, but they're putting together something that looks like a fucking case, 
And if it looks like a case and it smells like a case and it comes in briefcases and that's the smell of leather, then it's a case. Okay? Wow. What does it take? What the fuck does it take to wake this country up again? Huh? What level of slumber and stroke are we in? Is there a pulse? Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Really, you got to be kidding me. I mean, I already thought it was, you know, that there was enough. And I may have said this last week, but when they said, all I need is 11,071 votes. And then if we could get that cleared up in Georgia, you know, if you just put that on there, you know, then we'd have, what? That wasn't enough? President of the United States calling the, 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 the guy in charge of elections down there in Georgia, telling him how many votes he needed? What fucking planet do people have to be on? to see this. Do you have to go to another planet and watch this through a telescope? Son of a bitch. We are sitting here. And then uh, the Supreme Court decides uh, that the uh, uh, that there should be a um, the concealed carry in New York City, which had been in, around for a hundred years. But it was That's uh, not constitutional. Okay. We're going to, we're going to have to, you know, we're going to have to open that up. People should be able to carry guns. And it's, you know, I, I don't think, okay, call me silly, call me, uh, wacky, but for God's sake, uh, I don't believe that the, um, there was any sense amongst those, uh, writing that constitution. First off that it might go more than 200 years. All right. For starters. I bet, I, 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 hope, I bet when they wrote it, they were hoping they'd get to Thursday with it, okay? And not to expect that 8 million people be living on an island together, trying to cope, where people are getting shot right and left in this town, all right? It, it, it's happening day after fucking day after fucking day. And your idea is, well, you know what would really help? Uh, you know, the Constitution thinks that... You, Really, this is what we're looking at, and that's it. No! Look at reality. It's a, I'm going to repeat this 40 times. The Constitution is a living, breathing document. Okay? They look at it just like it's the... They, they treat... Some of the fuckers treat this thing like it's the goddamn Bible. It is not the Bible. It is guidance. Okay? And you take that, and you put it against the backdrop of now. Not, not the 18th century, not when it was a bunch of white men. It's still a bunch of fucking white men doing this stuff. And for, and for God's sake, I mean, what, what you know, bro, we're gonna, now other states have to deal with this. That'll be good because what we need are more guns. Yep, gun, gun, that'll do it. I'm glad you protected those rights. Yes, Siri, Bob. Uh, once again... A president who may have been, you know, who was who probably at this point, the way it looks like, should have been impeached or imprisoned uh, for 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 the for the crimes and misdemeanors. But you know, he gets away with with picking these judges who were, uh, you know, have no sense of, uh, of of precedent. So this one doesn't count. The New York thing. We can run over what the, the they think, we you know whatever the state thinks, that for there. But the but we have to install state rights for uh, to make sure that uh, they're allowed to have their choice about abortion. What? 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 The state? The state? I, 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 it, the, the the tongue just it doesn't have a place in my mouth when when it, when I'm being sent down. Six five thousand six thousand five hundred words simultaneously to kind of debate itself over what that means. Okay, that in one case we can certainly push back on the state, and on the other, in the other, we we we're going to give the state uh, uh, the the freedom to make its own decision. It, it's I don't get it. Second Amendment is stronger than the the precedent of the Supreme Court, I guess. You know, even though um, for the first time ever, 
Um, I think somebody mentioned something. I can't keep up with all of this. All right. I I should be, I should have a pen at all times, uh, but I don't. This was, uh, they said there might've been another time that that freedom was taken away, but this is, but, but also, I mean, uh, it's, it's, it's not the way it's just beyond belief that they took away the right, the right that women had to make the choice that not an easy choice. No one wants to have an abortion. No one. None at all. It's not what people want. And, uh, you know, and it's, and, and we, I've lived, I've talked about this before. I lived through the period when it was uh, totally illegal uh, for women to have that right to make their in their, their their freedom their freedom to choose whether they wanted to have the child or not that they had no right to that so they had to go uh, deal with it on, on you know to find someone who would do it the I uh, I lived in a cabin in the the um, on the, on Lake Michigami that had been built in the early 1900s. And it was there, I've, I've talked about this as a ghost story episode of uh, on the Discovery Channel, I guess, that I did, in which I told the story of this and uh, about this place. And you can look it up. I'm not going to go through that story again. Because, but all you, what, because what's important from that is, is that I stayed in this cabin and the, um, uh, it was the cabin in which the veterinarian in town the veterinarian in town would use for uh, women in the town who uh, wanted an abortion would go to. And the veterinarian um, did as probably as safely as he could uh, provided them with that service that they, uh, that they wanted. Okay. And um, it, and I was in high school when I, um, uh, that was still illegal and I was in college and I knew women who had to go and, and, uh, and what they had to go through. And even when it was finally legal, you had to get through, uh, folks who, who were, uh, just blistering in their attacks on, on, on someone who does not want to do this in the first place, but has to, and feels that it is, they're, they need to do it. And this is all based on um, a, uh, an insane reading of a document that, uh, you know, it, well, I didn't really mention it there. No, of course they didn't mention it there because women were barely mentioned. They didn't even have, women didn't even have the right to vote and fucking discuss whether, whether this is, uh, you know, whether women should have the right to, uh, to, to uh, you know, be in charge of their own body. And you can't figure out because you, you just see it as, you know, that the moment of conception, that's, that's when consciousness occurs. No, fuck, it doesn't. That is not when life begins. Okay? That's the, the idea of life begins there. All right. I'm no doctor, but that's certainly part of the deal. I think can't say that the sperm hitting the egg. Oh boy, that is, uh, uh-uh. there's the baby. No, there is a, a, a point in time up to in which a woman can make that choice and not really is still going to feel the trauma, but it, it, it at least has the, the goddamn it doesn't have to go through the pain of feeling as if as they continue to say they have murdered. Okay? We didn't even take and the, the nonsense of we we don't even take care of the babies that we have wandering around, for God's sake. We have no no sense of child care. We're not gonna, you know, fuck it. And but boy, we want to make sure that those unborn, God, if we had only dedicated every the kind of energy dedicated to the unborn, to the born, whoo, and now they're going to help. 
Now these states, now we're going to get down. Now we can do it. Now you can do it. You could have done it before if it was so fucking important to you. And the reason we're doing it is because of religious reasons. Okay? That's the reason we're doing it. That's the bottom line of it. Because the, the uh, this is where we have got no sense of separating church and state. Every other liberal, the Irish fucking protect women's rights, okay, when it comes to abortion. The Irish did it. And they're the ones who were, you know, bleeding about it for years. And they even they got their shit together. Not us. Nope, we're going to go back. We're going to go back to the, the dark ages. That's what we're going to do. Son of a bitch. Okay? Because that's what the Bible, because the Bible is, that's because we, we're going to uh, follow our Christian ideals. It's not, it's that we separate church and state here, guys. All right? You think it's, uh, it's you think it's a sin. That's really what you think. And it, it's a sin because you see it as murder. Okay? That's what you see it as because of your religion. Okie doke. It's that simple. I'm sorry. And you don't get to impose that on others. Okay? And if you really believed in what you say you believe in, then you should goddamn well know. <laughs> That's a stupid thing <laughs> to go using goddamn after that. But you should know that um, that if you believe in what you say you believe in, that these women are going to go to hell. So what are you worried about? They're going to have their comeuppance. They're going to pay for their deeds. So stop it. We left, uh, you know, England in part Many people left uh, because of re religious um, persecution. And they wanted to go somewhere where they didn't have to deal with that. Rhode Island was kind of founded on that, uh, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was. And then we used that. And that's why we had separation of church and state. That's why. And we can't bring ourselves to doing it. We can't figure out. We got to fight it tooth and nail. We'll stop it. Okay? Just stop it. That's the deal. You don't get to impose your religion and its beliefs on us. You get to be happy with yours and stop, stop shoving it down people's throats. Okay? Just stop it. And you've got, and now, oh boy, we didn't really know that, uh, that uh, Gorsuch and, and Kavanaugh, how do you not know? How did Susan Collins not know? How did Manchin not know? I knew. Well, we're just, we really believe in the precedent. And so it's been time and again, and we're not going to rock the boat. Fuck you. They lied. They lied. They lied. Huh? And if they lied, according to your Bible, shouldn't, Shouldn't they um, have to pay for that too? Huh? If you're going to make women pay for, for what they're doing, shouldn't they have to pay for lying? In, in lying in order to end up on the Supreme Court, which they have to stop calling SCOTUS. Say what it is. It's the Supreme Court of the United States. Don't demean it with initials. Or call it what it is the day after when I was wandering around yesterday calling it the scrotum. Okay? You want to call it that? You can call it that for a while until that fucking gets together and realizes what law is all about. And I certainly don't know, having not gone to law school, but I have some more sense of it than those fucks. That's for sure. That Alito, Jesus. If, if, if nothing else, the, the, the one thing that maybe will come out of this is that we'll start to teach sexuality like we're in the 21st century, but we're not. We're not going to teach a 15-year-old, uh, you know, in a health class about a, about a rubber and how to use it. We don't do that. I hope, I'm sure in some places they do now. 
but I'm sure it hasn't progressed very far from when I was in school and the jokes I used to <laughs> do about it, you know, and, and uh, you know, the, the kind of like a half-assed way of teaching it. I hope that there is an opening, like the way they, you know, the, 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 this realization that uh, kids are going to fuck. That's what kids do. All right? Maybe they're not now because of what's gone on. But generally, burp, burp, those kids are hyped up on their hormones, okay? That's what they are. They're hyped up. Hyped up and kicking back and ready to roll. That's for sure. So teach them. Maybe that, if you do, can you do that? Huh? Can, can we at least do that in these states that have like, okay, we're going to turn the switch on now and there'll be no, no abortions in the state. You know, you know this, it, it's, so, it, 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 it's so crazy. We are so crazy when it comes to this subject. I used to do, I never even could come up with a joke about it. Because the only thing that I even came close was being able to say the word during my act to show the audience just how fucking up, uptight it made everybody in the room. Certainly, it, it, you could feel it. You could feel every asshole shut. God. So here we are. And, uh, and everybody is gonna, is losing their minds. So yesterday, um, I tweeted out, I have no words for what the Supreme Court of the United States has done today that wouldn't get me kicked off Twitter. That's it. That's what I said. All I was doing was really saying that I felt that, uh, you know, on a, in a very simple way without saying, going through and giving them uh, the words that they could then throw back and go nuts over that, uh, that, that I was basically saying, this is, you know, what I felt about the, um, about the Supreme court decision. And the, what some of the people said back to me was it just, uh, it was disgusting and awful and, 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 and beyond comprehension and, 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 and disturbing and 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 not, to, you know, to talk about what you know. Maybe you're lucky. You know, it would probably be better if your mother aborted you. Why would she say that? Just tell me. You know, I don't agree with you. This, I feel that the you know I believe in the rights of the unborn. That's all. That's all you had to say. But to attack people personally, I attack no one personally on that, and I try not to. And, the, and what people come back with is so vicious. It, it just, we, we have lost all sense of civility. And that doesn't fucking help. Okay? Hence, it's why we have laws. In order to create a sense of fucking civility. That's it. Okay? Laws are the etiquette that provide us the a pathway to a government. Okay? If I said that right, I, I hope I did. Be, be. And Clarence Thomas will now use this. He's saying, well, you know, maybe we should could take a look at same-sex marriage again, huh? Maybe we should look at that. What the fuck is the matter with you? Meanwhile, your wife is wandering around trying to to to, to, to have the the, uh, the the election overthrown in in you know in Arizona. Come on. You're going to look at same-sex marriage. Wow. And all the other things that you think need to be looked at. Please. Clarence, you just started writing briefs. Huh? What did you, you know? Did they, did they, did you, did you, you woke up? That's what you had to tell us? You, you've got some fucking nerve. No, we don't go backwards. We don't. We're in the 21st century for crying out loud. Boy, oh boy. And for allowing this to happen, my generation should just be put in prison, okay? Take, take McConnell, take the rest of them out. Take all of them my age out. I don't know what to start with. Where do you want? We'll have a boat. <laughs> do we start at 67 and up, 65? 
If it's 70, definitely enough. Okay, enough's enough. I don't care because it, we, we, we dropped the ball on this and it is dis- awful. It's, 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 it's just, it, we, we need to be, we need to be taken and, and, and locked up or at least told to shut the fuck up. All of us, all of us, I'll shut up if they shut up. These people my age p- p- fucking spouting off who should know fucking better, who lived through that sh- shit ass time that we lived through and learned nothing. Fuck you. Huh? The tiger, the, the tiger says, fuck you. Oh, boy. Whew. And that's what I got. I didn't think I was going to try to do this without screaming. <laughs> yes, I was. I was going to try to do it without screaming. Well, that didn't work, did it? <laughs> boy. Yesterday, I, I don't know how women are dealing with this. Uh, the women who, uh, that group of us, the, the, the group of women uh, within us who, uh, who believe that they, you know, want that f- freedom to make that decision, that they fought for it for years and then kept it in place for years. And, and said wiser than me that it was, we were going to get fucked. And I was like, no, nobody, these people wouldn't do that. I'm as dumb. I am. I'm as dumb as Manchin and Collins. Okay. I don't know how they feel because to me yesterday was like PTSD. I don't want to do these arguments anymore. I did them before. I don't want to do them again. Nobody should have to do these arguments again at all. This was settled. And this, to turn it over to the states is bullshit. All right? Why? Because some states don't deserve the right to govern themselves. But that's for another time. Uh, Meanwhile, on a lighter note, (laughs) the Detroit man has built a mini movie theater for squirrels. That's right. In the midst of all of this, in the midst of all the madness, the howling, the screaming, a man has in Detroit, <laughs> and it's not my friend John Bowman, has built a mini movie theater for squirrels. Now, I'm not a big fan of squirrels, as Kathleen Madigan continues to point out, but I've been quiet on the subject. But I've, I've always feared the little critters because, I'm well, first off, they, they come into golf carts and they eat food, and then God knows what you're going to pick up. And then, you know, with all that's been happening in terms of animal Stuff jumping to human being, monkeypox. God knows what the squirrels are bringing around, huh? And I still believe that they they're rabid. Nobody else agrees with me. Uh, science doesn't agree. It's the one place with science I veer from them. I don't think that those fuckers could be out there and and not get rabies. How is that possible? And if they don't, then why don't they take squirrel blood and shoot it into all the animals that do get rabies? And that's something for another time. But a Detroit man has built a mini movie theater for squirrels, complete with a marquee. Uh, yes. Handmade promotional posters, lead strip lights, a concession stand, and a screen. Jason Lindsay, he's 30 years old and has spent two months and $600 creating the cinema, which shows a film he made, Revenge of the Squirrels, on a computer tablet. I really wanted to know what squirrels would do with their own mini movie theater, said Lindsay, who lured viewers and viewers with nuts and blackberries. Honestly, they loved it. Well, I'm glad he had a chance to, to have them sign papers on the way out. They, what do they do after movies? They, you know, they, when they're testing them, they have the audience write their <laughs> impressions. I guess it's the rotten tomatoes of squirrels. What do you do? Wow. You know, some of us find a way out of this madness and create a movie for squirrels. And if that's the way uh, to go, I, I couldn't do it. I just, uh, to me, I get caught up in all this and it's like quicksand. And I'm being sucked down and I'm screaming, help, help, throw me a rope. Well, maybe I'll have to join the squirrels at the theater. 
Um, thank you for joining me. This week, um, we get the rants from the performance at the Wind Creek Event Center. I was at the casino and didn't even get to gamble. Probably a good thing. And um, I think uh, you'll enjoy these rants and uh, we'll take you back to a different time before the before we reached uh, what it, it, it appears to be a, a, a level of madness that I did not think possible. Uh, but we are certainly finding ways to uh, to become, uh, we've, we, to, there's an insanity that just, it's, it's a, uh, I, who knew that there was that much elasticity in insanity? I wish everyone out there the best. And um, I wish I could say, uh, you know, we'll get through this. <laughs> I, I believe we will. Um, I just hope we do it as soon as possible. Because uh, we can't go on like this. We can't go on making people's lives more and more difficult, okay? We have to, we have to become really uh, the adults we set out to be. And it's time for uh, those who truly understand um, what, uh, what we were founded on with this country, the principles it was founded on. It's time for them to step forward and and not listen to this bullshit anymore, okay? And stop worrying about their fucking election possibilities and potentials. Stop worrying about if they're going to win or not and start helping us win. Please take care of each other. It's, uh, it's a rugged summer. Maybe it'll make the winter seem nicer. <laughs> Boy. Isn't that an upbeat note to end on? It's all I got. Thanks for spending time with me. It means a lot, more than you'll know. Today's show is sponsored by Microdose Gummies. By this point, you've probably heard about the rising trend in THC gummies, and you might have been curious as to what benefits you could get from them. Microdose Gummies deliver perfect entry-level doses of THC that help you feel just the right amount of good. Microdose gummies are available nationwide, and you can learn more about them and microdosing THC by visiting microdosegummies.com and use code LEWIS to get free shipping and 30% off your first order. We are coming to you live from Bethlehem, Pennsylvania at the Wind Creek Event Center, which is uh, uh, it's a, uh, it's a, it's another place in Pennsylvania where you could just come and just say, hey, take my money. <laughs> it's, it, it's, uh, it's been a, a great night, and um, I'm going to uh, go without further ado to the, uh, what was written in, because since really, it's, it's, uh, I've enjoyed reading these. <laughs> and I'm serious, if I, it's what's, what's been, I want to thank everyone who's been writing in. And the, the, if I didn't read one of yours tonight, it has nothing to do with the, anything other than the fact of just time. Um, the, 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 each week, it, the, now that people have kind of caught on to this, uh, there's, uh, I could do an hour of this. And then I get from people, I can't believe you're doing this. This is really bullshit. Well, you know, that, thank you. Thank you for being, thank you for allowing Americans to have a voice, you fucking asshole. So... <laughs> Because <laughs> I, I really try to avoid uh, a lot of the politics unless it's really kind of interesting. More, more I try to get into what it is or how the politics affects the, the person. But mostly I really enjoy the fact that people are willing to say fucking anything. <laughs> this will begin with Sandra Diffendahl. Uh, why is it that people sitting in the middle of a 22-seat row come late? Because they know that you're there, Sandra, and want to irritate you. And they should, Sandra says, have to give each person they climb over $1. <laughs> Especially if it's a, you're at a casino. <laughs> Kevin Stanley. Um, 
Kevin Stanley says, having a casino in Bethlehem where there used to be a steel factory, which is where this is placed, by the way, like some late-stage American business tumor. Uh, that's good. Good enough to get you to groan. Yep. Kristen Nesvetter. Let me tell you about living on Main Street in Nazareth, Pennsylvania. I'm, I'm really... I'm really glad I wasn't alive as a Jew when they started naming these towns. <laughs> Fighting for street parking, hating your neighbors for taking two parking spaces, and on the winter and in the winter they have snow emergencies. If there's going to be an inch of snow, we have to park three blocks away. When you do finally shovel the space, you have to speed home and pray no neighbors stole your newly shoveled spark. Fuck! Town living sucks! <laughs> yep, you can, you can go to Rapid City. <laughs> this is Kate Dietrich. The seats in this goddamn event center aren't tiered. I'm in the back row and just see people's heads. <laughs> Don't worry, eventually, God. Dale Dower, Dowernheim, these fucking road construction, these fucking road construction folks making more fucking potholes than they fix. <laughs> Welcome to Pennsylvania, the fucking pothole state. Every. I'm just thinking, I, I've got so many things from every state in the union about the amount of potholes there that I'm actually just thinking of publishing a small book that would, um, a really small book of the, the amount of rants so that everyone could read so you go, you, you think you're fucked and then you'd go, oh gee, Jesus, look, they're really screwed in Seattle. <laughs> they're fucked here. Because everywhere I go, there's like literally 10 to 12 fucking things about how the roads are completely fucked with potholes. So, and I think I do it. And then if there was any kind of a public trust that you could give the money to so that they would fix the potholes, that that would be just a great charity thing. But there's not. There's nowhere. We used to have a highway trust fund. <laughs> Yeah, we trusted that one. Um, for the third year in a row, my college is raising tuition $3,000. This is from Benjamin Dellen. This brings tuition well over $60,000. These students don't see a single penny coming back to redo dorms, fix issues, bring entertainers. Oh, and our fucking books, books cost over $800 a semester. Uh, 60000 bucks. Holy fuck, nut in a stick. <laughs> I went to the University of North Carolina, and it was $1,200 for the year. Or the, the semester, actually. 1200 a semester, which was uh, because I was an out-of-state student. 60. Your parents just should have just come here to the casino. You should have played the 60. <laughs> you, should, you should actually just write... A note to the university, uh, I would love to give you that $3,000. I'm going to try to triple it tonight. Um, I'd be willing to sign the note. Mr. Black said it would be okay. <laughs> fucking unbelievable. It's just, I, okay, I can't even get it. It's just beyond fucking belief. But we'll, we'll figure it out. You know, we'll figure out the college thing. I, I can't even, I just, my... It bro you broke my brain. <laughs> this is from my friend, Emily Bernard. I'm going to do two pieces in a row about daylight savings time. And I really appreciate you coming out when, it's, when they're going to fuck us with the clock. <laughs> Fucking daylight savings. Why the fuck do we give ourselves jet lag twice a year? and exacerbate our seasonal affective disorder every winter. It doesn't benefit farmers because farm animals and crops don't give a shit what the clock says. 
It doesn't save energy. George W. Bush, if anything, we use more lighting the longer, darker winter days. There's no fucking reason for it. Just stop already! <laughs> um, when you... And when you go out, my friend Lenny, who uh, I went to, actually went to high school with, who's selling merch on, out there, um, he, uh, he, the, it, it, the daylight savings time actually mentally breaks him down. So if you could just pat him on the shoulder and say it's going to be okay. <laughs> this is a longer explanation of how fucked it is. Richard Claridge, Claire Reich, I'm not, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, Richard. Uh, Lewis, I just got home from a long road trip with the, my wife and kids, and one of the kids. I was tired of driving and asked my wife if she would mind taking over for an hour. She said she didn't want to. It made me an offer that if I finished the drive, she would give me what every husband wants, to sleep until 9.30. <laughs> I know you don't have a wife or kids, so just trust me that this is the gold standard of marital giving. I was ecstatic. Two extra hours without the tantrums of two little shits begging for food and getting pissed off that it's not to their specifications. <laughs> Fuck yes! <laughs> but my jubilation was subdued when I realized that my reward would not be what I expected. For tonight would be the stupid fuck biannual ritual of changing the fucking clocks. <laughs> costing me an hour of precious sleep. What makes this worse is that my kids don't know what time it is. They operate by the sun, like humans did for all history. Ever try to explain to a five-year-old why we change clocks? I did. Her response, that stupid poopy. <laughs> stupid poopy? In all my life, I never dreamed of such eloquence. Certainly she has a greater grasp of the English language than, say, our president. <laughs> why the fuck do we do this shit anyway? Does anyone benefit? And why the fuck did the kitchen appliance manufacturers put clocks on both the oven and the micro-fucking-way? <laughs> we need two fucking clocks in one room? Did you realize that in Phoenix they're so fucking stupid that they decided to live in a desert, but they were smart enough not to change the fucking clocks? Holy fuck! In this day of extreme partisanship, why has no one thought to run for office on the singular issue of the ending this cycle of bullshit? I'll bet if Elizabeth Warren former Harvard fucking professor thought of this, she would have finished higher than third in her own fucking state. <laughs> Donald Trump was tweeted that ending the changing the clocks would be fine by me. Great. This shit is so fucking stupid that it makes the orange face Muppet look intelligent. <laughs> but I digress. Maybe I can get an IOU on my extra sleep. Here's hoping. I doubt it. <laughs> now, I've got two here, and now, I need to know if, is, is J.J. Hamilton, are you here? Yes. You are. And is John Lester here? Yes. Oh, so you're related. Yes. Okay, then I'll read John Lester's. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll, say, um, but I'll read some of what J.J. Hamilton, this is, uh, uh, I can't believe I'm back here, this is from J.J. Hamilton. They're both over here. I, I'm back here in this shit town tonight, but seeing your show tonight is totally worth it. I have to rant about how I ended up here tonight with my dad and why I begrudgingly came. My family is from Philly, and we came here on my birthday for a concert last year. My family's relatively tall with abnormally large heads. <laughs> so, the, so the standing room crowd strongly disliked us. So much so, some ass hat gave my mother a beer shower whom I punched in the face. <laughs> so we, lo we left and swore we'd never come back. Well, and now I'm going to read. So he's here with his dad. Now I'm going to read you what John Lester, his dad, said. Lewis, I'm a 50-something-year-old man and have been married for 26 years. During that time, I've been fortunate enough to build and run a successful small business. My wife is very kind-hearted and finds it necessary to give gifts to everyone, no matter what the occasion. Her gifts suck. 
It's always crap you can find in the back of some store at the mall. My house is full of shitty fucking gifts. Her home office is full of junk. The basement is full of her crappy gifts. God fucking forbid we have a family over for a holiday meal. It takes her four days to clear a shitty future gift to people off the dining room table. From there, the shit either goes upstairs or down to the basement, and then the whole proceed starts over again with the filing up, filling up the dining room table again. Although I've learned through therapy <laughs> how to deal with this on, uh, ongoing episode, uh, li deal with this live ongoing episode of orders, it's not why I'm pissed. What pissed me off is she doesn't pay fucking attention. Fast forward to Valentine's Day. What the fuck? We just got done with Christmas. She buys me a card and asks me to open it, so I do. Inside the card is two tickets to see a comedian on March 6th in Philadelphia. She asks me how I like the present. I go from a euphoria to total dejection in three seconds. The tickets were for Louis C.K. What the fuck? Ironically, you were at the Miriam Theater last night, and Louis C.K. was at the Philly Met. Another shitty gift. <laughs> anyway, I sold the tickets on StubHub last night and used the proceeds to buy tickets to your show tonight. <laughs> Thank you, John. This is uh, from David, Dave Greer. Uh, I think it's time we put Jeff Bezos in charge of coronavirus testing. His fucking vans are on, uh, on our block more times in one day than the cops have been all year long. <coughs> Excuse me. Who better than an Amazon driver to administer coronavirus tests to the public? It would be the fastest turnaround test in history. Two fucking days! <laughs> we would know almost instantly who has it, and medical aid could then be given by an Amazon supervisor or route manager. And if they're too far gone, don't forget Amazon memorials. Dead today, buried tomorrow with Amazon Prime. I have to, Rich Clinchy, who uh, couldn't be here with tonight. He says uh, he got a great Christmas present from his kids. Uh, two, he got tickets to the show. They probably cost me about a hundred grand a piece. The two kids after paying for their college, but now he's he's in a hospital. He's got a, a double bypass, I think, going on. And uh, Caitlin is here tonight with her friend Alicia. Uh, now they get to enjoy the show, and I sit here with a with a, with a, with a, with. A, with <laughs> with a gravy in my fucking leg. I don't know what that means. Um, and, then, and then Caitlin, who's here, said, this is really great. I rarely get these with emojis. Honestly, I don't even know who you are, but my dad does, and he actually laughs at your stuff. So months ago, my brother and I brought tickets for him as a gift to go see your show tonight at Wind Creek. Ironically, he's stuck at St. Luke's Hospital less than two miles from the event center waiting on a double bypass operation. He's a smidge pissed and told me I should go in place of him rather than wasting the tickets. And I can't say no to an already pissed off sick man. <laughs> so I will see you tonight and we shall see if you can make me laugh as well. Well, I hope it worked out, Caitlin. And if not, lie to him! I will end with this. This came in last night. This is from Barbara Rosa now. Um, I had two last night that were both would have been wonderful endings, and this one is the one I've chose tonight. Um, to, uh, she goes, uh, my husband John and I are, were here last night and celebrating our 40th anniversary, and we have you in part to thank for that. Since 1980, we've raised two wonderful kids, took care of our aging parents, and were civic-minded. I worked in education. And my husband built a successful business, saw it decline, 
and then built it back again to even greater success, working endless hours, including nights, weekends, and holidays. This year, he is finally working a bit less. We have four beautiful grandchildren, are blessed with good health, a summer home at the Jersey Shore, and an adorable American bulldog mix named Wally, who bears an uncanny resemblance to Yogi Bear's sidekick, Boo Boo. <laughs> so everything's great, right? Some time now to kick back and bit and enjoy. Well, no, hell no, fuck no! <laughs> I could not have imagined this insidious evil. I could not have seen this coming. Our once rhythmic, organized division of labor lifestyle that worked just fine is now shot to hell. He's home! <laughs> and suddenly curious? and interested in every fucking thing I do. <laughs> Time will permit the litany of questions from why I brought this brand of mayonnaise to how the laundry is sorted to the quintessential, did I know the correct way to load a dishwasher is from the center out with the smaller dishes gradually increasing to the larger dishes and pans along on the perimeter facing inward so that each item received the same amount of soap and spray? No, I said, you've been eating off dirty dishes all these years. <laughs> Time for an intervention. What to do? I had the answer. Sports. He now had the time to pursue that. Philadelphia is sports obsessed. 365 days a year. From Eagles football to Flyers hockey to 76ers base basketball to Phillies baseball. And because four major sports teams weren't enough, we now have the Philadelphia Union soccer team, plus year-round collegiate sports. It's mind-numbing, the true opiate of the people. It was the perfect distraction, I thought. But it backfired. <laughs> of all the fucking sports in the universe, my husband determined that the one he loved most was, wait for it, NASCAR. <laughs> NASCAR? What the fuck, Lou? You have to understand something. We are neither Southern nor Christian. <laughs> we are Northeast Jews. It's just alien. His interest has now turned to obsession. I decided to see what the excitement was about, and so I sat down to watch. Here's what happens. First, the red car comes around, vroom. Then the blue car, vroom. Then the yellow and the green car, vroom. And then the red car comes around again, vroom, vroom. On and on, so forth and so on, ad nauseum, ad infinitum. I felt my eyes starting to roll into the back of my head and had to get up off the sofa before I was declared clinically dead. <laughs> I'd lasted a whole seven and a half minutes. Even our dog Wally cocked his head to one side, raised his eyebrows and looked at him with his soulful brown eyes as if to say, what the fuck are you watching? <laughs> We went out to dinner with friends. John started talking about NASCAR with the enthusiasm of a teenage boy who just had sex. <laughs> Replete with engine types, drivers, horsepower, and tire tread. Our friends, because they're our friends, nodded and smiled politely, but I could see their furrowed brows and riveting glances. I saw them throwing shade and giving him side eye. They were talking NASDAQ, and he was talking NASCAR. <laughs> We decided to take a long weekend. I had some ideas. Ticket to our world-class Philadelphia Orchestra, or the magnificent collections at the Philadelphia Art Museum, or a visit to the Interactive National Constitution Center, where it all began. John thought for a moment and said, why don't we drive up and spend the weekend at the Pocono Raceway? <laughs> I, I heard it in slow motion. The po co no race way. 
an entire weekend of beer, sausage, and vroom, vroom. I let out an audible gas. What the fuck was going on? Who was this alien before me that looked just like my husband? Had I been transported to the Twilight Zone? What was next? Would my Lexus SUV be replaced by a pickup truck? Would my delectable melt-in-your-mouth fall off the fort glazed brisket be tossed out in favor of a pig roast? My eyes narrowed and the room grew dark. For a moment I thought, there's not a jury in the world that would convict me. I quickly recovered and I said, what else do you like? And he said, I like comedy. Comedy, I brightened. I love comedy. And then the magic words, let's go see Louis Black when he comes to Philadelphia. And here we are. And we have plans to visit the National Comedy Center this summer. So Louis, it would seem that you are our savior. I would wonder what the rabbi would say about that. Even Wally is wagging his tail a mile a minute. So thank you, Louis. Happy anniversary to them. Thank you for coming out. You are terrific. It's always a pleasure to be in Bethlehem. Take care of each other. Let's hear it from my... Thanks to all of you for listening to my Rantcast. If you have a rant you want to get off your chest, send it in to me at lewisblack.com forward slash live. You can think of it as therapy or whatever you want to think of it as. Just let it rip. And I want to thank the true stars of our show, the ranters, and the splendid rants they gave us. Lewis Black's Rantcast was created and hosted by me, Aha, Lewis Black. Our live rant audio was produced by James Salter. Our theme song by Chris Lane. Executive producer, Ben Brew. Executive producers, Matt Kleinschmidt and Robert Kelly for the Laugh Button Podcast.